Hare Krishna. So I welcome everybody for this second day of the five sheets of holistic health seminar. <laughs> this was supposed to be the third day, but as we could not have the session yesterday, so we are having yesterday's uh, session today, and this is supposed to be Annamai Kosh and Pranamai Kosh. So Pranamai Kosh means skills and talents, and here my Pranamai Kosh is exposed <laughs> because I am not internet savvy. and i was trying to make a video and the video was done but then we when we tried to put it in the system it showed that it will take another 1 hour and 30 minutes and more to get it uploaded into youtube <laughs> and there were many videos and uh, many uh, pictures and captions but somehow uh, i think krishna wished that i should give it online <laughs> so i accept my uh, very short uh, so much shortcomings about my it knowledge so my pran my kosh is exposed <laughs> so <clears throat> once again welcome you all and i would like to first invoke the blessings by prayers to our acharyas so that i can give this seminar om agyana timirandhasya gyananjana shalakaya चक्षुरुन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतमनोभीष्ट स्थात यूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाती स्वदाक वंदेहम श्रीगुर श्रीयुतापदकमल श्रीगुरून्वैष्णवांश श्रीरूपं साग्रजातं सगण रघुनाथान्वित तम सजीव साद्वैत सवधूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाद सह गणलिता श्री विशाखान्वितांश्च नमो विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नितिनामिने नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा so after seeking blessings of <coughs> all our acharyas now i want to really thank from the bottom of my heart to anand raghav prabhu and jagannath prabhu who are actually uh, so nicely helping us into making this seminar possible and now so let us uh, begin with our this class today of panchakosh the second day that is annamai kosh and pranamai kosh uh let us have a recapitulation of what we did yesterday so yesterday we uh, we saw what are the five koshas as it is seen in the screen annamai kosh pranamai kosh manomai kosh vidyanmai kosh and anandmai kosh then we also saw the various perspectives that these koshas have so uh, charma drishti karma drishti marma drishti vivek drishti and bhava drishti so all these various drishtis we could see then we also saw of what elements these panchakoshas are made like how annamai kosh is made up of earth water fire air ether and pranamai kosh is made up of 72000 nadis and then the manomai kosh is made by intelligence vigyanmai kosh is made up of 
सॉरी मनोमय कोश इज मेड बाय माइंड एंड विज्ञान मय कोश इज मेड ऑफ इंटेलिजेंस एंड आनंद मय कोश द लास्ट कोश विच इज मेड अप ऑफ चित्त देन वी ऑल्सो सो वॉट ऑल आर द डोमेन्स ऑफ पंचकोश वेरियस डोमेन्स ऑफ अन्नमय कोश एंड प्राणमय कोश देन मनोमय विज्ञान मय एंड आनंदमय देन वी ऑल्सो सो द फाइव फंक्शंस ऑफ द पंचकोश that is anna my kosh it how it is the medium of other koshas that we'll be speaking about today then then we also spoke about the domain so uh, today we'll be discussing it in detail okay so yeah so the anna my domain is all the physical aspects that is that is this also we spoke yesterday uh, weight height chest sight hearing capacity smelling capacity then our muscles bones hair then bodily strength and bodily beauty nourishment so all these things are the domain of the annamay kosha and the functions of annamay kosha are medium for other koshas functioning so food storing uh, bodily attraction and reproduction so this we spoke yesterday now to my mind uh <coughs> this thing comes that how those people who are having strong annamay kosha how they are uh, able to do herculean tasks so whenever we speak about such people uh, what is the first person that comes to our mind yeah bajrang bali ki jai and also uh, bhima so bhima is also called vrukodara that means he had uh, great digestion power in fact when vishwamitra muni came to dashrath maharaj and when he asked ke please give me your sons because i uh, son because i want to kill all the asuras who are uh, you know troubling all the sadhus in the forest they are not allowing us to do yagya so dashrath maharaj was tremendously afraid he felt so insecure he was so much attached to the supreme personality of godhead lord ram ram ji is not ordinary living entity he is the supreme personality of godhead but still being a father being a king still he was reluctant to send his son to uh, to the forest with vishwamitra muni but bhima's mother queen kunti though she was a a woman who was supposed to be afraid but and though she was a simple woman and she was a mother mothers are always so caring for their child but kunti maharani when they were uh, disguised as brahmanas and they were in the ekachakra village and there they came to a potter's family they were staying with them and they realized how one of the the person from that family was supposed to go to bakasur she said don't send anyone my bhima will go so much confidence she had she did not want to sacrifice her son she wanted to because she was knowing how uh, you know strong bhima is she had that confidence in so this is a great example another great example of annamay kosha similarly we have got our own acharya of our ब्रह्म मध्व गौड़ीय संप्रदाय मध्व संप्रदाय मध्वाचार्य ही वॉज ऑल्सो वेरी स्ट्रॉग ही हैड अ स्ट्रॉग अन्नमय कोशा ऑफकोर्स ऑल कोशाज वर वेरी गुड आई एम स्टेटिंग ऑल द नेम्स ऑफ दोज हुड ऑल द फाइव कोशाज वेरी गुड बट एस्पेशली दे आर नोन फॉर बींग वेरी स्ट्रॉगली बिल्ट एंड दे परफॉर्म सुपर ह्यूमन फीट्स एट द फिजिकल लेवल देन वी हैव गॉट अगस्त्य मुनि देन ऑल्सो इन द रिसेंट पास्ट we have got kodi ram murti naidu uh, some of you all may be knowing not most of you all but in his time he was the greatest wrestler of india in fact he was known internationally he was called the uh, sando henry sando of uh, of india hmm? what he used to do he would allow an elephant to stand on his chest for 6 minutes that was his power not only that there was a lord minto who was the viceroy of british india 
and he was very proud of his uh, new car and in full acceleration of that car ramamurti held that car and did not allow the car to move ahead can you imagine what must be his strength so this is another uh, wonderful example but andamai kosh does just doesn't mean that uh, bodily strength of course bodily strength is there for andamai kosha but vishesh specially uh, the senses the power of the senses when they are very good so that also is the symptom of be having a very good andamai kosha so yeah so the examples of people who are having developed andamai kosha we can say uh, we, which we can see in our own homes like for example my grandmother even even in her late 80s she could thread the needle very nicely before than me she was my grandmother but her eyes were so perfect even at that age then even uh, i have got an example of my own mother we were uh, if we are watching something suddenly my mother would say go 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 uh, gas band kar i mean switch off the gas so i would say why because the milk is coming up i i used to wonder how she knows <laughs> so because her nose the sense of smelling of women is very good they can pick up whatever is happening in the other rooms also which men probably don't then also there is another example of when my father would come home before he would knock my mother would say go open the door and i would ask how do you know she would say that i can re- uh, recognize the the sound made by chappals of your father so she could you know differentiate other sounds uh, uh, the other chappal sounds and her own husband's chappal sounds uh, so that that sharp was there this thing so the ears so eyes nose ears then about the tongue i have got the example of my own shiksha guru uh, paramans prabhu who is the additional director of bhaktivedanta hospital right now but many years back he was a brahmachari and he would teach us uh, cooking during festivals so at that time he would take a morsel of food and put it in his mouth and he would say mm, jayavitri lavang ajwain he could just tell us what all spices are there by just tasting it and he could name all the spices so sharp was his uh, tasting capacity <laughs> so uh, this is another good example of uh, andamai kosh the senses are very strong then uh, even about ears my wife also would sometimes you know say uh, can you please stir the dal and i would go in the kitchen and pick up the r- wrong spoon which of course every husband does <laughs> and uh, and she would immediately call from there no 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 not that spoon the spoon besides that and i would like how how does she know that i have picked up the wrong spoon so their ears are so perfect that they know which spoon uh, has got what sound so that is the very good example of annamai kosha which you can see in our own uh, family also yeah then <clears throat> now we'll uh, talk about what all are the factors now we know annamai kosha is there for reproduction for bodily attraction it is the for, um, it is the you know the medium for other koshas to function yeah so all these things so our annamai kosha should be very very uh, pure I, i would say so to make it pure what all are the factors which are favorable to make annamai kosha strong to make it purified yeah so there are many things actually but i have chosen these at least these five most important factors if we can take care of ourselves that is ahar then nidra then shuchi and vyayam so ahar of course should be satvik satvik means uh, no non vegetarian food it should be a vegetarian diet and if it is offered to the lord first then we can get lacto vegetarian sanctified food a spiritual food so and not only satvik ahar but there should be ahar charya 
Ahar charya means timely. We should eat in time. I hope today my wife has not is not seeing this video because because I have I was making the videos and all I I could not eat properly at the right time. <laughs> so I am not the right person to give this uh, seminar. But somehow uh, Krishna has allowed me to <laughs> do it today with all the uh, different trials and tribulations. But I am giving the class today. Thank you for hearing. Then the second is nidra. So. <clears throat> It is as it is said, early to bed, early to rise makes a person healthy, wealthy and wise. So sleeping early, if we sleep at 9 o'clock, uh, yes, you heard right, 9 o'clock. <laughs> but if we sleep at 9, between 9 and 12, it is the, the mode of ignorance. So this, it, when there is the mode of ignorance, then the best thing that you can do is sleep. You will get a very nice sleep. So, so we should be sleeping early, if not 9, at least 10. And from then to, then we can get up early. And after uh, getting up early, in our Vedic tradition, we have got so many things to do after getting up early. Yeah, that we'll be discussing later. And then the third thing is Suchi. So Suchi, of course, I don't have to tell everybody. Everyone knows it very well. Taking bath, clipping the nails. And so all those things come under suchi. So there is external suchi as well as internal suchi. Then vyayam. So we should be uh, taking up, you know, some exercise, sports, games. We must take up and that helps us. And along with that, if this, these two further, you know, these are also other further factors which help us to purify the annamay kosh. Favorably. So that is the Sarva Bhauma Vrata. So Sarva Bhauma Vrata are the Yam and the Niyam. That is the five social moralities and Niyam are the five uh, individual moralities. You see, in our Vedic tradition, it is so wonderful that uh, first the consideration of the society of the nation, uh, of the village. So that is given preference first and then comes me. I come last, but others should. So social moralities in Sarvabhauma Vrata, the Yama, is very, very important. So what are the Sarvabhauma Vratas? I think I have got it. Yeah. So Sarvabhauma Vrata, the f first five, that is Ahimsa, Satya, Brahmacharya, Asteya and Aparigraha. So these are social mor moralities. So if you are non-violent, the society will be benefited. So if you are truthful, the society will be benefited. If you are celibate, the women of the society will be protected. I mean, if you are having a non-exploitative uh, propensity, then naturally others will be benefited by that. Yeah. Then a stare, non-stealing. If you are non-stealing, then the society will be benefited by that. And then a parigraha, not to take because just it is freely available. So if one has that, then there will not be any hoarding mentality and therefore everyone will be benefited by that. And then the last five, they are the individual, individual, uh, what you call, moralities, the principles that has to be followed in life. So in that, of course, suchi, what I said earlier, cleanliness. So suchi, then satisfaction, then tapa, austerity, then learning. Uh, all these things are good for me. If I do this, I will be benefited. And lastly, dependence on God. So right now, last 15-20 minutes, I could actually experience this, you know, depending on the Lord. Because the video was not getting loaded and I was thinking whether today's uh, day 2 seminar would be possible or not. But of course, Vaishnavas are like, you know, Kalpa Vrikshas. So I'm so grateful to An uh, Anand Raghav Prabhu, Shivas Thakur Prabhu. This laptop from where I'm working, he has come all the way from his home to give this laptop to me. And then Jagannath Ji also helped us in connecting. So Vaishnavas, if they are around, anything is possible. <laughs> so dependence on the Lord. Of course, I depended on, not directly on the Lord, on the devotees of the Lord. <laughs> so... <clears throat> 
yeah so the next uh, what we were telling is along with the sarvabhoma vrata you know asana and asanas means especially if just surya namaskar is done yeah uh, how i wish that i could show the uh, video which was so wonderfully made by my daughter she was uh, she showed the how the surya namaskar is done all the 10 asanas in surya namaskar itself there are 10 asanas and uh, once you while you do this if you chant the mantra the 12 surya namaskar mantra then uh, so we can we finish uh, doing 12 surya namaskars every day and by doing that just it takes 3 minutes but it is a sarvangin uh, vyayam so all the uh, your body muscles and your systems are very nicely served so uh, these 12 mantras are there today now i we will not be able to do surya namaskar here but at least we can chant why not the 12 mantras so we all can it is there seen on the screen you can chant along with me om mitraya namaha om ravaye namaha om suryaya namaha om bhanave namaha om khagaya namaha om pushne namaha ओम हिरण्य गर्भाय नम ओम मरीचाय नम ओम आदिताय नम ओम सवित्रे नम ओम आर्काय नम ओम भास्कराय नम सो वन मंत्र इफ यू चैंड बिफोर डूइंग सूर्य नमस्कार of course you can go in the uh, youtube and you can check out with so many people uh, they show how to do surya namaskar ramdev baba ji and so many others they show how in in, in rss uh, there are so many people who show how surya namaskar are done so you can uh, please check it out there and then so if we do that the, that will help us to purify our annamay kosha and of course there are some do's and so there are some don'ts also what factors are unfavorable to annamay kosha so the factors which are uh, unfavorable let us see all those things laziness yeah if one is lazy naturally his annamay kosha is not going to so yukta ahara viharasya yukta cheshtasya karmasu yukta swapna avabodhasya yogo bhavati dukkha everything should be yukta if we should get up in time we should uh, you know eat in time sleep in time everything should be in time then second is conflicts so conflicts also bring like uh, in mahabharat yuddha there were uh, kauravas army was many more akshani senas than pandavas but still who won pandavas won why because the kauravas they had conflicts with one another all the leaders karna and bhishma then uh, shakuni and bhishma and dronacharya everyone had you know uh, so much of enmity with amongst themselves in the team and because there were conflicts it affected into the weak annamay kosh of the kaurav army then addiction malnutrition starvation disease accidents unrestricted sex desire so all these are unfavorable factors for annamay kosh so we should be taking care of it so any time the annamay kosh is going down all these things should be uh, seen checked so here now we are discussing only about the individual panchakosh when we go to the family panchakosh we will realize that how all these factors we can will again be uh, referring to all these points later okay so this was all about the uh, annamay kosha and now let us speak about the pranamay kosha so pranamay kosha as i said <coughs> my pranamay kosha today is exposed because yesterday i could not do this so let me tell a story of the person even in you know his bad times 
even at that time because of his strong pranamay kosha he won though he was defeated so what is the name of such a person there are many persons in india like that yeah but one of them whom i would like to discuss today whom i have mentioned him even in my book and that is king prithviraj chauhan so i recommend all of you this book of mine a handbook on panchakosh so i have written a book which you can uh, please refer so in this book i have spoken about maharaj prithviraj chauhan so maharaj prithviraj chauhan when sultan shahabuddin ghori when he uh, you know captured prithviraj chauhan of course it was not possible to capture he uh, was defeated by prithviraj chauhan so many times but because of of course jai chan uh, uh, prithviraj chauhan was captured and then he was tied and he was insulted and he was beaten he had torn ragged clothes his eyes were plucked and here is a blind person who is captured who is insulted who is you know uh, like a joker he was treated and he was brought to the stadium completely humiliated and at that time everyone was laughing at him ha 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 oh you are great king acha oh you are great in a uh, great archer is it oh acha acha so come on show me show me your uh, archery and along with him his friend chandravardai he was also there he was a poet so he stood in front of prithviraj chauhan and shahabuddin ghori said chandravardai you start singing poems and uh, this uh, prithviraj chauhan you should show your archery i want to see and it was a stadium and everyone was laughing at them so at that time chandwar rai while making poems so he was such a great poet huh? he made poems and in that poem in one of the stanza he actually told the position of shahabuddin ghori where he is sitting and prithviraj chauhan heard it understood the position of shahabuddin ghori and chandravar rai said ashtabans 64 gaj ungal asht praman ta pache sultan hai machu ko chauhan and as soon as he gave this signal where this ghori is sitting where the sultan is sitting he immediately took his arrow and shot the arrow and of course it was the perfect feat the arrow directly went on at the neck of sultan and sultan was dead so at such a situation when he was completely defeated his eyes plugged and everyone insulting him even at that time yeah he showed such a superhuman feat of pranamay kosh that means skill and talent here there are two skills coming together the skill of poem and the skill of archery both of the skills coming together and such a great victory directly killing the sultan yeah so this story uh, is very dear to my heart yeah and it gives me a lot of inspiration <laughs> so pranamay kosha means uh, when it, the symptom of good pranamay kosha purified pranamay kosha is the people having good uh, skills and talents so uh, <clears throat> how this yeah this is what no sorry yeah so the domain of pranamay kosha is Uh, energy levels skills and talents and what is the uh, the pranama kosha it is made up of it is made up of 72000 nadis the astral tubes through which the uh, various uh, life airs they flow so there are five life airs the pran apan vyan saman and udan so these pranas when they enter the body then all the systems are booted like for example when the child is born what is the first thing that is done to it 
when the child is born the doctors make the child cry when the child cries <coughs> so when they when they cry the air goes inside <coughs> when the air goes inside the prana pranas that is a life air they go inside and boot all the systems and if the child doesn't cry then what happens the child may become uh, handicapped or it may even die so that is the importance of pranas going into our body so as soon as the pra they they go the systems are so it is very very important for pranamay kosha so <clears throat> the main deity for this strong and purified pranamay kosha is surya devta he is the main source of all the pranas because of surya all the pranas are there so because of surya so prana means uh, life airs basically it is about the flow of the life airs and the direction these two are important factors of pranas and direction all the direction 10 directions are illuminated by sun first of all and because of sun there is direction the sun comes from the east and because of the sun we can see all the directions otherwise what direction can we see without sun so directions come and then sandhi means when the sun comes at dawn then at the noon and at the dusk all the three times they are called the kala sandhi means at that time uh, like the brahmanas they do sandhi uh, su, uh, what do you call gayatri so these times sandhis they are very very uh, you know very auspicious to we we should we must do uh, japa and you know all the penances if they are done, done during that time people say we should not sleep at such time we should not eat at such times so that is very very important the three sandhis then also there is a desha sandhi desha sandhi means uh, like the doorway the pathway or we say dahliz or we in marathi we say umbartha yeah the the place which divides the home and the outside so whenever we enter the home there is a different consciousness inside the home when you enter a temple there is a different vibration in the temple right than the outside world and what divides it is that chaukhat that dahliz so you see always the dahlis that pathway is decorated in the hindu uh, hindu family's home it will be decorated by rangoli or it will be decorated by ghee lamps or it will be decorated by garlands festoons like that or sometimes when it is a festival then at the door there is there are banyan trees then sometimes there are trees of auspicious trees like mango hmm? so um, they are decorated why because when someone comes from outside in uh, to the inside of the home he is prepared for a very nice consciousness and that is how when when we come with so much of stress and and someone comes inside a devotee's home suddenly he feels so good and a glass of water is given to him he is made to sit he is welcomed with a smile in our bhakti vedanta hospital when the staff come so when they come there is a prayer and then everyone is served with attar and then flower and they offer it to the uh, to uh, shila prabhupad our beloved spiritual master and then uh, we even hug each other and greet each other hare krishna so in this way when the work starts with good consciousness then there is effectivity in the work so uh, what i was trying to say here is that pranamay kosha is the sandhi it is the you know it holds the gross body and the subtle body together 
when when we die people say iske pran toot gaye iske pran chhoot gaye so what is this toot gaye and chhoot gaye it is nothing but the pranas the 72000 nadis they are broken right so and then the the soul goes along with the the subtle body out and then the kriya karam is done the last rites is done to the gross body so the pranamay kosha when anything through the gross body through the senses it can enter into the subtle body through this pranamay kosha so this pathway is very important so <clears throat> yeah so there is anagata pran there is manogata pran and there is atmagata pran so anagata pran means as i said the energy it comes from where it comes from the sun so in the presence of sun and chlorophyll and sunlight the plants prepare their food and this energy is stored in the grains and when these grains are taken and when we eat those grains this energy goes into our stomach and then when we breathe the oxygen along with oxygen the prana vayu huh, it goes inside the life air goes inside and then there is digestion means what there is combustion inside and the fuel has gone in the form of grains and then there is oxygen and then there is creation of energy and this energy is released and then sent through the blood to all parts of our body so that means the energy from where have we got this energy surya dev so from surya this energy comes and we are utilizing it so we are very grateful to surya dev so that is anagata pran then there is something called managata pran so what is managata pran like some all all of the devotees must have uh, you know experienced this they read some line in the book of shila prabhupad and suddenly they get uh, so much enthusiasm even if it is a nirjala ekadashi they do so much of book distribution why they are inspired they are inspired because of this manogata pran which is in with that inspiration is got from you know the such sources like saints or leaders so they make use of this energy the mental energy manogata pran and some are the atmagata pran they are inspired by atmagata pran so atmagata pran means uh, the people like shila prabhupad people like uh, you know all the acharyas they are inspired by divine energies they are inspired by like shila prabhupad he was inspired by rupa goswami and by all the acharyas yeah and by sir bhakti siddhant saraswati maharaj by their orders so that energy is not ordinary energy but divine energy krishna is working through them and somehow uh, there is so much of uh, you know transformation in the entire whole world so uh, in this way i have covered this topic now let us understand these pranas which they go inside there are five i said there are five life airs so let us understand them now so five what are the five uh, pranas um, uh, life airs prana vyana apana udana and samana so let us understand these one by one so first is pran so all the uh, life airs will be seeing their movements what are their movements and activities that they control in the domain and function and imbalance uh, due to the imbalance what actually happens so prana its movement is downward and in and therefore the inhaling whatever uh, prana as we take inside so inhaling it is bec uh, because the uh, the pranas so the activity control uh, the inhaling activity inhaling activity is by prana and the domain of this prana is head neck and trachea and the function of prana is perception so all that we can see we can hear we can smell we can taste we can touch so all these 
perception perception functions are because of pranavayu and then if there is a imbalance in prana then what happens then the uh, the, the disease of senses like seeing hearing uh, those impairments are there because of the uh, the imbalance of prana and then there is apanvayu the apanvayu goes downwards and out and the activity which is controlled is the the navel and below then the liver activity then the intestine gall bladder menstrual cycle sperm ejaculation and child delivery so all these activities are controlled by apan so the function actually is excretion so all those things which are going out of the body so uh, our malamutra and our sweat hmm? so all these things uh, it is because of apanvayu so the domain of apanvayu is large intestine and rectum or anus then if there is imbalance in the apan then we experience constipation hormonal imbalance miscarriage it's because of that apanvayu then vyanvayu the movement is from center to the periphery so the activities that is uh, activity that is controlled is providing oxygen and nourishment to the body and the domain of vyan is the whole body and the function that it uh, you know uh, it takes up is circulation and if there is imbalance in vyan then there is hypertension hypotension insomnia like that so all these things and then we have samanvayu so the movement of samanvayu is from periphery to the center and the activity controls is assimilation of food then the domain is navel then in between the pran and apan yeah and then the function of saman is digestion and if it is imbalanced then people experience distension of stomach then toxin accumulation and all these things okay and the last is the udan vayu so the movement of udan vayu is upward and out so activity controlled is ex exhaling like prana the activity was controlled by inhaling so here because of udan the exhaling and talking whatever we talk it's because of the udan vayu and thought process that is the function thinking is the process and the domain is throat and uh, above heart so all that area is the domain of udan vayu and in imbalance of udan vayu a person is you know ta 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 you know like that if the people they stammer or any kind of heart problem then that means the there is a imbalance of udan so because of the pranamay uh, kosha when all the systems of the body when they are perfectly working then a person experiences skills and talent so skills and talents come because of all these systems only if the systems are not proper then the talent won't come so and therefore we must do pranayam so if we do pranayam very nicely regularly there are just six uh, six things if we can do you know first is omkar you know i had made a uh, video my uh, my daughter had made a video of all the pranayam also uh, maybe later we'll put it so first is omkar three times we say om so three times like om so now because i am giving a lecture i have uh, finished it very soon but otherwise your om can be uh, as big as 1 minute 1 and a half minute no problem <laughs> so three times om omkar then we do uh, bhastrika that means dirgha saas andar dirgha saas bahar hmm? deep breathing at least 2 minutes and then last 15 seconds it should be little balapurva a little faster like that and then there is kapal bhati so i cannot show everything you can again visit 
uh, Ramdev Babaji's uh, YouTube and there he has explained it very nicely. Then Kapal Bhati, then Agni Sar, then Anulom Vilom, hmm? both the nostrils, Anulom Vilom and Brahmari. We can speak about this, you know, as long as uh, one hour or one and a half, you know, uh, about each. You know, we can speak very nicely, but uh, that is not today's uh, uh, topic. But yes, we must take up with pranayam and these pranayam exercises just take 20 minutes. Every day just do 20 minutes and it will help us a lot. It will help us to focus the mind. When the mind is clear, when the water is, suppose, you know, there is no disturbance, we can see the bed. So in the same way, when we are at peace, when there is no thought, so this pranayam gives us zero thought effect. So zero thought, then one can make nice decisions. If there are so much of uh, thoughts clogging in our brain, we cannot make proper decisions, right? So therefore, uh, to make that happen, and yes, last I said, uh, I did not say, Brahmari. Uh, Brahmari is the last uh, exercise, pranayam exercise we must do. And then what happens by doing this? We develop various skills. So naturalist skills, musical skills, logical, mathematical skills, existential skills, interpersonal skills, bodily kinesthetic skills, then linguistic skills, intrapersonal skills and special. So special skills, all these skills, you can again go into the Google and find out that, you know, so many skills are there. So all these different skills we can develop. And then <clears throat> let us now uh, talk about what all factors are favorable for pranayam? So pranayam is the first thing, uh, pranamay kosh. So first we have already discussed pranayam and then sleeping early, getting up early, sports, singing, elocution, you know. In fact, in pranayam, japa is also a form of pranayam. So when we do japa, that also achieves. But if we do it properly by sitting erect, uh, and then, you know, this uh, chanting with a proper discipline, then yes, it is also a very good form of pranayam. And it not only gives us skills, talents, but it gives us something higher, the love of Godhead. And last slide probably of today, factors that are, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, we are, we are, we have missed, but I have got in my personal computer, the unfavorable factors of uh, pranamay kosh. So what all are they? they? You know, um, too much endeavors or too less endeavors, then laziness, then lamentation, then uncontrolled anger, then uncleanliness, indiscipline. So all these uh, factors are not good for pranamay kosha. So, uh, you know, recapitulating Today, what all we discussed is, you know, the domain of this, then what are the functions and what are especially the steps that we should be taking to purify our Annamai Kosh and our Pranamai Kosh. So I hope you uh, liked uh, today's seminar and if you have liked it, please also again come tomorrow. I will also uh, be not making any videos now. I'll be directly coming online. I think this works very good because I was trying to make videos and therefore yesterday I actually, um, I found myself not doing justice. So please forgive me for yesterday. I couldn't come, but, uh, and I thank you all for coming uh, today and watching this. And tomorrow we will be discussing about three koshas, Manomai Kosha, Vidyanmai Kosha and uh, Anandamai Kosha. So that will finish our Panchakosh understanding of the individual and then later on, day after tomorrow, we will be discussing how we can apply it uh, in the family. So that is that is a little bit more interesting to me and I am sure you will also like it. So please keep on visiting and thank you very much. Hare Krishna.